Hey guys, Eric from HK Constrictors here. Uh, today's video, I just wanted to kind of go through uh, the changes that occur from a baby Pokey Crown Suriname uh, that we produce here. Uh, from the baby, this is a 2020 uh, male that's going to be shipped out here when the weather warms up. He's the last one we've got going out uh, from our sold out litters from, from last year. But I know a lot of people ask about, you know, oh, I want a baby that has a red tail. I'm going to show you basically this tail. It's really dark. Um, you'll see that in our photos a lot. That is a baby that have very, very dark tails, almost chocolate. He's still got a little bit of the baby grays here. He was born in July of last year. Uh, but you can really see uh, that you're going to see as they progress in age, the tail gets extremely bright red, almost like a fire engine red. So this is about a six month old baby, um, going on seven months. So you can see the size in this one. He eats uh, a small mouse about every two weeks right now. Um, when they're first born, I feed them every seven to 10 days. Most of the time it's about every seven days. Um, each one's different depending on how fast they digest. Some of these will digest every seven days, every actually five days in some of them. Um, so you can feed them every seven. I always wait for them to at least pee before I offer another meal because um, it's important in these guys to try to avoid uh, regurgitation as babies. Um, but I see a lot of videos out about or even comments uh, in social media about, you know, slow grow them. Um, there's a reason you used to see monster Suriname and Guyana and Peruvian boas in the wild. Um, there, I always say there's an art to, to breeding, to raising these things. Uh, but I just see so many small underfed, uh, you know, BCC out there, Surinams and Guyanas and Peruvians, you know, that everybody says slow grown is the best. Um, I think properly grown is the best, to be honest. Uh, if they have a nice solid muscle mass, these things can take in large quantities of food. Um, the biggest thing is the frequency. Uh, you don't want to overdo the frequency, uh, but they can take down a large meal. Um, I know you've all seen the, the National Geographic stuff. Um, I grew up with safari cards for my generation, if anybody ever remembers that stuff. Um, but you can definitely feed these things. You just have to really pay attention to them. Um, and I always recommend anytime you have an opportunity to get babies from anyone, a good quality breeder, get a baby and raise it up. Um, you don't know how a sub-adult or an adult was raised. Um, you may think it's in good health. A lot of times it will be, but I don't think it's worth the risk. Everything I've had, uh, or I do have in my collection, I got as a baby or no older than one year old. I have very few of my collection that was actually um, a year old. Most of them I bought as babies and raised them up myself to really get to know them, their feeding habits, their shed cycles. Um, I meticulously keep track of everything, which I think is really important for whether you're a breeder or you just want to keep this as a hobby, keep a few as a pet. Um, I think it's important, but kind of give you a little more close up here on the patterns of this if my camera will get in here. But you can see how dark that tail is. So it looks like chocolate. So I'll show you a, a couple of its full blood siblings from our 2017 litter and show you how they're coloring up and then I'll actually show you the parents as well. So let's take a look at the 2017 I actually have a trio, two females and male, uh, that I held back, and you can see the size difference uh, for four-year-olds, and definitely see the drastic change in color. So here's one of our 2017 uh, females. So the little male I just showed you, this is a full-blooded sister to her, or him actually. Um, so she is just now three years old. You can see the size on her. Nice thick muscle tone. Uh, not huge, but definitely not small. So I think the big thing is to look at the thickness along the body, down through the tail. She's definitely thick, but she's not uh, obviously obese. She's not power fed. You can see her head uh, size grows to their age. So when you see these tiny little heads and big bodies on boas, most of the time it's overfeeding. Uh, but this is a three-year-old. And this to me, uh, in my experience, 
is really about where they should be. Obviously, I'm biased because I'm the one raising them. But both the parents uh, to this, I'll get the female out uh, here after um, I show off her brother. But you can see how this this bloodline of Pokey Ground, it's, uh, it's Rio Bravo. But the two parents that I paired up um, for two different litters now are pretty big. They're good size compared to what you typically see. Um, they're not the biggest out there, but the female is about seven and a half feet, and uh, I think she's right around 30 pounds right now. Uh, this one is probably about four feet. She gets an extra large rat about every three weeks right now. Uh, during the winter time, I did it about once a month. So the meal size is always going to be the same. It's the frequency that I feed them. So as they get bigger, the size of the meal is always relative to the size of their body. So you can see a decent sized bulge in her after she eats a meal. But you got to give them time to digest it. Uh, just because they poop doesn't mean you get you put another meal in them uh, They'll actually get a lot of muscle mass and some growth uh, Throughout the winter when they're fasting a little more now. I'm I know some breeders will not feed them for the entire two or three months uh, I don't practice that method. Uh, I just Decrease the food and then when it gets warmer in the spring I start going up to every two and a half to three weeks and just keep that consistently throughout the summer into the fall uh, when I'll start to taper off again. But you can see the size of a three-year-old Pokey Ground Suriname here. Uh, so let's take a look at her brother real quick. Give you a, a size difference. Her sister I was going to show, she's actually in a uh, starting a shed cycle right now, so I won't get her out. But let's take a look at her brother. Um, you can see the size difference. More of the thickness, you'll see he has less of it than she does. So let's take a look at him. Here's her brother. It's also obviously a 2017 male. Um, he has probably the best tail that I've produced so far. You can see with the slight ladder tail. If you get it over here, you can see it coming out. Their tail obviously brightens up with age. You can see the, the deep red in it. My camera gets it here. Um, he's darkening up here. Probably will start a shed in a, a couple of weeks also. But you can see kind of the cherry red in it. Uh, as these pokey ground Suriname age, they get a little more buckskin color, the browns that you're used to seeing, um, and then their tail really starts to brighten up and get uh, some of these a fire engine red. I have a couple of uh, adults that they, their tails went darker, um, but this combo that I have with my two largest uh, Surinams really produce some amazing tails. This one has extremely thick connected saddles, as you can see, and perfect peaks. So um, I like all different types, but I think the biggest thing I fell in love with with this one is uh, the symmetry on the saddles all the way down. A lot of times you'll see huge peaks in the neck, and then it kind of blocks, turns into blocks as it gets further down his body, but you can see it almost looks like somebody drew his saddles on um, as it goes all the way down to his tails his tails, his tail, um, the peaks stay very consistent. And then he has a really cool ladder tail. So you can see he's he's a good size as well for being three years old. Um, his head size is about the same as the female. The two females have a little bit more girth on them. Um, he's solid, really strong. Um, but you can see how docile uh, these Suriname are. I can't say that for all my Suriname, but something about the the Rio Bravo Pokey Ground Blood. Uh, I haven't gotten him out of his his cage in probably, I don't know, three or four weeks. And they just come out, they're calm from the very beginning just like this. So um, I didn't have a calm down period with him or anything before I, I started showing you guys. I just grabbed him out of his cage and, and they're just super inquisitive and calm. So hope you like this one. Now let's take a look at his mom. All right, so here's our big girl. Literally, that's her name, big girl. Um, <laughs> she's freaking heavy right now. She is a 2012 Pokey Ground Suriname. I don't know if you can see her head or not. I'm gonna have to put her around my neck. She's too heavy right now. All right, so this gives you some size uh, relation to her, or relation to her size, I guess I should say, as she gets 
caught in one of my cages. All right, here we go. She's about seven and a half feet and just huge. But again, I just got her out. She's extremely calm. Um, you can see the size of her head on my hand here. Give you some size reference. I'm about six foot, about 185. Um, so average sized man, I guess. <laughs> uh, but she's, she's freaking awesome. She's the one last year that had 31 babies and zero slugs. So the, the uh, three-year-olds I show you, these are her babies. And then the, the very first boy, little baby I showed you is her baby from this past year. But she's just an awesome animal. Um, she has just perfect markings, amazing tail. You can see the red in her tail. Again, almost like a fire engine uh, red when the sun hits it. It looks kind of dark right now. There, the camera lights it lighting up a little bit. But she's, uh, you can see her side medallions there, really bright red. She's just an awesome female. She has eaten probably two to three pound rabbits. Um, the biggest rats you can find don't do anything to her, obviously. But about two to three pound rabbits, um, probably every three to four weeks for her. Um, you can see this is her after giving birth to 31 babies this past July. So she's she's a freak of nature. This one is not normal. Um, she had her first litter of 27 babies and three slugs um, basically on her fifth birthday. So she was so much larger than any other um, Surinam that I had seen at four years old. She had the muscle mass, she had everything uh, going with her, or going for her to breed. So she's trying to get on my, trying to find a hiding spot in the cage here. So she, uh, she recovers quick. I mean, she's massive, solid muscle right now. Um, so she'll be even bigger. She'll probably be close to 40 pounds by the time I, I breed her again next, actually be this winter. So that'll be two years apart. Uh, but she just, she's awesome. So hope you like her. Uh, I was gonna show you the male, but he's in a deep shed right now. So um, I'll get him out another time. You guys can take a look. He's about the same size as her, uh, maybe slightly smaller, um, but he's just solid muscle as well. Just a big, big square. Uh, but her head is, is awesome. It's probably one of my favorite things about Pokeground Suriname or any true red tail is the size of their heads. All right, guys. All right, so I hope you guys like the uh, size difference there. I think the main reason I wanted to show you this is uh, just to tell everybody you can feed them. Don't be afraid to feed them a good size meal. Uh, when their babies obviously start slow, you saw how small the 2020 was. Uh, that's only about six months old. He's eating small mice, uh, again, like every seven to 10 days. Uh, it's just really important when they're first year to really uh, go a little easy on them uh, as far as meal size. Frequency every seven to 10 days is good. Um, and then once you get past that one year mark, you can start to push them a little bit on size and then you start to spread the frequency out. So if you go up a size to a, uh, a large mouse or even a medium mouse, space it out every two weeks. Um, but after that first year, I wouldn't feed any more frequently than every two weeks, regardless of the time of the season. Uh, they just can't digest the food fast enough. And now a python, sure, but boas, especially these true red tails, they're very slow metabolism um, as far as digesting the food. Now that doesn't mean they grow slow. It just means they don't need as much food, uh, but they convert that energy very well. As you could see when we got to the three-year-olds, uh, definitely started to take off. Between three and five years old is when you really see the growth rates uh, of these Surinams and Peruvians and Guyanas really take off um, if they're fed right. So, you know, you can't slow grow them up to three years old and then try to pump them. It's, it throws them off. So, you know, I mentioned earlier, that's why for me, when I was building my collection, um, it was really important to get them as babies so I could make sure from, you know, like I get some of these as, as young as four months old. Uh, from the breeders, you know, several years ago, it's important to be able to get them on a certain uh, cycle with food, temperatures, all those things. Especially if you want to be, you know, breed these. Uh, but even if you can successfully breed them, that means you've raised them to be healthy, 
uh, mature animals. So I think regardless if you plan to breed them, I encourage you to raise them the same way uh, because if they're producing litters, that tells you they're healthy. Um, from my experience, uh, you can't shove a couple of snakes together and hope they make a, you know, a high fertility rate if they haven't been fed right uh, and been taken care of. So hopefully this helped you guys. You can see how big the, literally a big girl <laughs> is her name is. Uh, she continues to grow so from this. She's had uh, two successful litters so far um, and she continues to grow in size. So she gets, you know, I'll take her out of her, her cage every couple months um, just to really handle her a little bit uh, in the winter, especially. Uh, it's a little, little slower on the times I get her out. In the summertime, I get her out much more so she can go outside um, you know, get some exercise, get some care, you know, look around, things like that. But, uh, you can see from babies to adults, uh, this bloodline is extremely calm and very inquisitive. So hopefully this helped with everyone. Um, again, this whole reason was to, to not push them on power feeding, but also, you know, you don't have to slow grow them, uh, get them to a size that nature intended them to be and a growth rate that nature intended to be. And I think you'll be good. Uh, to go for a long time. Thanks guys.